In our previous videos, we discussed various slave trades and how they evolved, operated, and eventually died out over time. However, most people only think of the transatlantic slave trade conducted by the major European powers from the late 15th to the early 19th centuries. Institutionalized slavery has always been a part of culture and societies, but over time the practice died due to social, religious pressures, or even the development of technology rendering the practice irrelevant. But the European slave trade paled in comparison to that of the Muslims in both numbers and those enslaved and the longevity of the practice. How did both slave trades begin? Which slave trade lasted the longest? Which slave trade enslaved the most people? Which was the most widespread? And which ended last? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, military veteran, historian, author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. In 1415, Prince Henry the Navigator and his father, King John I of Portugal, and his older brothers led an attack on Queta, Morocco, which became a Portuguese province. Henry later sponsored Nuno Tristal's exploration of the African coast and Antao Gonçalves' hunting expedition to Africa in 1441. Both men captured several Africans and brought them back to Portugal, one being a chief who in a business deal returned to Africa, promising in exchange to provide the Portuguese with more Africans, which started the slave trade. These expeditions brought back gold, ivory, and slaves, enriching the Portuguese economy and helping fund further expeditions which started their empire. The creation of better and more accurate maps would aid future empirical slave traders. These efforts saw the Portuguese becoming the first to round the Cape of Good Hope off South Africa, reach the African East Coast, then India by Vasco da Gama, and even reaching Japan. Once the Portuguese sailor Pedro Alvarez Cabral landed in Brazil in 1500, the region was colonized by the 1530s, and with its agricultural requirements, black slavery exploded. Brazil became the most important colony in the Portuguese Empire and was, at one time or another, the world's leading producer of sugar, diamonds, and tobacco, all due to the slave trade. Soon, the Spanish followed suit and began their slave trade to their South American colonies, and with the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494 being in effect, Spain and Portugal divided the New World between them. The growth of these empires saw the English, French, and Dutch launch their own slave trades with their New World colonies in North America and the Caribbean, as all had their growing empires and the need for free labor. But times and the mindsets of the Western nations began to be influenced by what became known as the Age of Reason and the Enlightenment, where men such as Edmund Burke, Voltaire, Rousseau, and other philosophers forced societies to examine their consciences and morality on many subjects, slavery included. These movements resonated with many influential people. The first step was when the United States, under President Thomas Jefferson, proposed to ban the importation of slaves from Africa in 1804, which took effect in 1808, although not abolishing the practice within the United States, as stated. In 1778, he, Jefferson, drafted a Virginia law that prohibited the importation of enslaved Africans. In 1784, he proposed an ordinance that would ban slavery in the Northwest Territories. But Jefferson always maintained that the decision to emancipate slaves would have to be a part of a democratic process. Abolition would be stymied until slave owners consented to free their human property together in a large-scale act of emancipation. In 1787, the Society for the Abolition of the Slave Trade was founded in Britain by Granville Sharp and Thomas Clarkson, and in 1792, Denmark banned the slave trade into its West Indian colonies, 
go into effect in 1803, but owning slaves only ended in 1848. Spain then abolished the slave trade from Africa in 1811, but Cuba ignored the law and continued the trade. While Sweden made it illegal in 1814, the Netherlands in 1817, as did France, but it did not go into effect throughout their empire until 1826, but slaves in their colonies were not freed until 1851. Great Britain and Spain signed a treaty prohibiting the slave trade in 1819, but Portugal only agreed to abolish the slave trade north of the equator, which kind of made no sense, but finally ended ownership in its empire in 1858, and Brazil proper had ended slavery in total in 1888. The British joined in 1807 through the efforts of William Wilberforce and the Slave Trade Act passed which made it illegal to purchase slaves directly from Africa, although slavery remained widespread and legal in the British Caribbean. The European slave trade from Africa effectively ended by the 1830s, with exception to Spain and Portugal. In 1833, due to pressure from Quakers, Anglican, and anti-slavery society members, Parliament ended slavery in the British Empire, taking effect the next year. The United States banned slavery in the country in 1865, and Cuba abolished slavery in 1886. While the Royal Navy's West African Squadron still enforced a law between 1808 and 1860 and freed 150,000 Africans, often capturing Spanish and Portuguese slave ships. In 1926, the League of Nations Slavery Convention abolished slavery globally. In 1948, United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, stating, No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Effectively, slavery in the Western Christian world was over after an estimated 13 million human beings were, had been transported from Africa, with around 6 million going to Brazil alone, 4 million going to Spanish colonies, and up to about 400,000 brought to the English colonies over a 250-year period. The Spanish and Portuguese were undoubtedly the most active slave traders. However, as we stated in previous videos, the Christian transatlantic slave trade lasting 400 years paled in comparison to the trade practiced by the Muslims within their various empires, and not just in Africa, but Europe and Asia also. Long before the Prophet Muhammad began his conquest, slavery existed, and he ensured to incorporate the practice within the Quran, following upon that religious creation, combining many of the teachings of both Judaism and Christianity. As Islam spread across the Arabian Peninsula, North Africa, Europe, and into Asia, slavery was a part of the process. Under Islam, slavery existed as a legitimate business from the late 6th century until the last Muslim nation officially banned slavery in the late 20th century. Slavery exploded under the early Abbasid Caliphate from around 750 to 950 AD, but not all slavery was equal in the Islamic world. Slaves from many ethnic and religious groups worked in building irrigation systems, various types of mining, animal husbandry, but also they served as conscripts, as soldiers, guards, domestic workers, and sex slaves. Most slaves came from non-Muslim regions, as enslaving fellow Muslims violated Islamic law. The Umayyads raided the Byzantine Empire and flooded the slave market with Greek, Serb, and Eastern European slaves, especially Slavs and Russians and Ukrainians. Using Slavs for hard physical labor led to a few slave revolts, such as the Zanj Rebellion of 1869 to 1883 in southern Iraq, which was a massive uprising of Bantu slaves captured in East Africa, which was so violent and impacting it led to an end of that practice under the Abbasids. Another example comes from the Arab historian Al-Utbi, who chronicled that after the Battle of Peshawar in the year 1001, 
Muslim armies in the midst of the land of the Hindustan had captured some 100,000 youths. Muslim slavers also scoured the Indian Ocean, hitting Indonesia and other island regions, taking millions of slaves over the centuries and converting them to Islam. Many rulers also used slaves in the military and administration to such an extent that slaves could seize power, as did the Mamluks in Egypt. Over time, they became a powerful military caste, often defeating the Crusaders, and on more than one occasion, they seized power for themselves. For example, ruling Egypt in the Mamluk Sultanate from 1250 to 1517. The Ottomans also greatly expanded slavery with their incursions into Central Europe during the Middle Ages through the late 16th century. White European slaves were the most sought after, especially women. This was also part of the North African white slave trade, and see our video on that subject, where Berbers and Moors raided Europe, even reaching Ireland, Iceland, and the coastal regions of England and Norway to kidnap slaves. It is estimated that over one million Europeans were taken over the centuries. Likewise, Russia and Ukraine were favorite hunting grounds for Muslim slavers, and untold millions of people fell into that life of enforced servitude. But, by the 14th century and beyond, the bulk of Muslim slaves came from sub-Saharan Africa due to massive European military victories over the Ottomans, in particular from the 16th century onward. And although the Quran does not condone racial prejudice, the Arab slave traders often did, and the blacks were treated far worse than slaves from Ethiopia, Somalia, and other regions, especially the Europeans a practice openly condemned by many Islamic leaders to their credit, especially among the Ottomans. Many will argue wrongly that Muslim slavery was not chattel slavery, and I will preempt that argument by saying that in some cases it actually was. Although many slaves, especially under the Ottomans, had the opportunity for upward social mobility, so did black slaves in the United States who received emancipation from their owners. Freedom from slavery being granted was almost unique to the United States, as such a practice was nearly unheard of in the Spanish-Portuguese colonies, even in the British Empire. Slaves in the U.S. were considered valuable property, but not so in the Muslim world in many cases. Children in the Islamic slave markets were in high demand, far exceeding the Christian method, even in the U.S. Many black Muslim slaves lived in appalling conditions, suffering abuse, malnutrition, and disease, with very low life expectancies and an astronomical infant mortality rate. As late as the 19th century, Western travelers in North Africa and Egypt noted the high death rate among imported black slaves. Of great interest, European political leaders in the Berlin Conference of 1884-85 where they wanted to carve Africa up for their own purposes, cited the slave trades in Africa as the prime reason for their respective colonial presences in Africa. But, in fairness, it should also be stated that this proposal for colonial expansion was also due in large part for the need to have their respective populations accept the individual national interests of creating new colonies. Southeast Africa and the Indian Ocean continued to be an important region for the Oriental slave trade up until the 19th century, and David Livingstone and Henry Morton Stanley were the first Europeans to reach the interior of the Congo River Basin, and they discovered that massive slave trade. In fact, the Arab trader Tibu Tip was the greatest of these slave traders, and please see our video on him. Therefore, Islamic slavery was brutal, expansive, long-lived, and very slow to end in the Muslim world, having lasted over 1,400 years as a legal and religious practice where religion and law, Sharia law, were one and the same. For example, here is a list of the Islamic nations and when they ended legal slavery. This will be of interest. Zanzibar ended slavery in 1909. Morocco ended slavery in 1922. Turkey, the post-Ottoman Empire, in 1924. Iran and Jordan ended slavery in 1929. Bahrain 
ended slavery in 1937, Kuwait in 1949, Qatar in 1952, Yemen and Saudi Arabia in 1962, while Oman followed with abolishing slavery as late as 1970. Mauritania became the last nation to abolish slavery in 1981, and in 1990, the Cairo Declaration on Human Rights in Islam declared that no one has the right to enslave another human being. Slavery in the Muslim world did not end due to a comparable age of reason or enlightenment period pushing moral, religious, and social pressures, as had happened in Europe. Open legal slavery only ended because the Western industrialized nations would not do business with them in many cases, and these nations found that being a pariah state was not conducive to good international relations, let alone business. Also, all of these nations listed were at some point in time former colonial possessions or mandates of the major European powers, especially the former possessions of the Ottoman Empire until after World War I and their influence was critical to achieving freedom for tens of millions as condition for the possession being granted independence. But believe it or not, even today there is still a thriving slave trade in Libya and Sudan, where government control does not exist and there is no international action or condemnation. Today, ISIS and other Islamic groups still take slaves, usually operating in lawless regions where no central governments exist, or if it does, it operates in name only. And they are not Christians. Just saying. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten History. If you like this episode, please consider becoming a channel member or joining our Patreon page. This would help us offset the ever-increasing cost of production. As always, please like, share, and comment. And if you have any show ideas, please contact us, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.